Sergio Motti, welcome back to Bloomberg. Good to see you again this morning. Net new money for the bank came in at $28 billion. Explain to me where it came from and was there a material inflow from Credit Suisse? Well, first of all, uh, we were very pleased with the fact that uh, at times of uh, distress in the market, generally the first quarter was very challenging. We still saw clients uh, uh, looking at UBS as a safe haven. Uh, and uh, uh, the inflows were coming in from all regions uh, and uh, from different sources. And uh, in, in that sense, uh, we are very pleased that, uh, particularly also after the announcement of the transaction, uh, of the acquisition of Credit Suisse, we still saw inflows coming into uh, our bank. So a sign of confidence of our clients. Seven billion came in in the 10 days after the transaction closed. Was that Swiss money? Was that from Credit Suisse? Can we define that as Credit Suisse flow? No, it was generally across the board. And, and you can see that uh, uh, those numbers were uh, also well diversified. Uh, I would say also uh, one main driver was the US. So the confidence in this transaction was uh, also shown by our international clients uh, having a, a, a strong uh, uh, faith in, in our ability to execute. $69 billion went out the door in assets from Credit Suisse. You, in this quarter, in those 10 days after the deal, got $7 billion. I'm surprised you didn't get more. What do you say to that? Well, obviously, uh, we can demonstrate that there is enough competition out there. So anybody fearing that uh, this transaction creates too much concentration uh, uh, is wrong. So I think that uh, we are pleased with the inflows we saw. Uh, we always say that we will not be uh, the only beneficiary of this uh, transaction, and the, the numbers sh seems to show that. There is certainly a move to money market funds. That's happening in every bank. Do you think the dash to money market funds, the dash to that level of product is at peak? Do you think we've passed the peak of that dash for cash and money market? Well, it's difficult to judge. I mean, what we have to do is to stay close to clients and do the best for them. At this point in time, we do understand that at least part of their liquidity has to go into uh, money markets or, or treasuries uh, because they, they have a better, in some cases, better pickups in, 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 their, in, their, um, in their yield. And so it's very natural and uh, we are helping clients to make the best choices. And we saw very strong inflows also in our own uh, money market funds that we, uh, we manage uh, within asset management. And in terms of the net interest income up by over 30% within wealth management, so what goes through my mind is, are we at peak rates? Do you think rates will top out at 5%? Do you see a case for 6% as some people are speculating in the US on the rate cycle? Well, the case is only, is only uh, based on, on the fact that uh, if you see higher rates, it means that inflation, uh, uh, inflation fights is, uh, is, is, is not successful and is necessary to go to that level. I would say that uh, the priority number one nowadays is to fight inflation, even if it costs uh, a, 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 a smaller recession. Uh, I, I, I believe that the social cost of high inflation over time will be much higher than having a slowdown in the economy. Do you think we'll have a recession, a mild recession? We, we, are, uh, we, we are not uh, ruling out that uh, towards the end of uh, this year and uh, early part of next year, we, we may see uh, a slowdown, yes. Let's get to the elephant in the room. Credit Suisse UBS, you are now the CEO. How confident are you the deal closes in the second quarter and what's the biggest hurdle? Well, so far we got uh, the PRA, the Fed, the Swiss authority. We are in advanced discussion with other key authorities to get uh, the, um, uh, the approvals for the transaction. We are still working and we believe that during the second quarter we will be able to close. The biggest obstacle? It's just uh, we have to go through the processes. It takes time. The share buyback is paused. For nine years, we sat together and we talked about dividend buyback, dividend buyback, dividend buyback. Here we are. We're in a pause mode. People are saying to me 2026 before it restarts. Is that a reasonable guidance to the market today that it's 2026 before you can smell a buyback restart? It's too, it's too early to, uh, to talk about uh, buyback. Uh, I think what is important is to say that we pose it and we haven't cancelled it. So our intention, as soon as we have more visibility about all the numbers and our, uh, and our plans, we will have also a better uh, view on our capital uh, return strategy. At this time, we are reiterating our intention to have a progressive uh, uh, cash dividend uh, um, uh, um, uh, increase every year. And uh, we are definitely uh, have an intention to um, uh, resume uh, share buyback when it's appropriate. 
Is there a hurdle, is there a milestone where you would say, this, this can help me back to restart the buyback? Is there some material hurdle to cross? The one material uh, aspect yes. in assessing uh, um, capital returns is the solidity of our balance sheet and our uh, liquidity position, which is critical to our business. Uh, we will not compromise this, and, uh, and, and I think this is, for us it's possible to achieve both, uh, continuing to have a strong capital position and at the same time having very attractive uh, sh um, shareholder returns. The chairman guided us at a number of times that the integration would take three to four years. Is that a low ball and a low bar? Uh, or, or again, is that a reasonable guidance? I think it's reasonable guidance. I mean, this is a complex uh, transaction. I think that's, uh, uh, but it's also a transaction that will offer a huge opportunity, not only to our shareholders, but also to the, our clients. Uh, the two franchises are extremely complementary and uh, in, in many areas and, uh, and also to our employees. But in order to fully execute a transaction of this complexity, it takes time. Uh, and we have to do the things in the right way. We should not hurry into doing things that, uh, uh, and uh, just for the sake of uh, closing uh, the transaction uh, in, uh, in a couple of years earlier. Again, what, what kind of milestone do you have? You, you've thought about this. You've thought about this deal for many years, you, Axel Weber. What, what, is the, what is the milestone in your mind that says, I'm really succeeding in this integration? Well, for me, is 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 a, is is, is, is a, more emotional than numerical. I would say that uh, in three to four years' time, I like to see uh, uh, the employees of the combined organization uh, at this country, our clients, to be very proud to be associated with the new UBS. There is a lot of social and political angst out there on Bahnhofstrasse and around over the Swiss Universal Bank. Lots of people call me and say they're going to have to give up a piece of the Swiss Universal Bank. He's going to have to IPO to appease the people out there. Again, your response to that kind of speculation. I'm glad you met some of them. I mean, it looks like we have a lot of experts nowadays on how to run banks in Switzerland. So I think that the only thing I can say is that we will take our time to make decisions based on facts and not based on emotions. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be uh, a good uh, transactions. Well, the facts are that you, in your tenure, downsized the investment bank and made it something that helps wealth management. Chairman again reaffirms investment bank will come down to 25%. So as you, you've done this before, you have knowledge of Credit Suisse. Again, my question is how quickly, in real terms, can you get an investment bank at Credit Suisse integrated and down to 25% of the group? Well, the blueprint is our blueprint. Uh, having said that, Credit Suisse has uh, also excellent capabilities that we were missing and will be very complementary to our franchise. But uh, one thing we won't compromise is, uh, is the way we do business, uh, how we do business, and also the amount of uh, resources, in this case risk-weighted assets, that we will allocate to, to uh, the investment bank will be uh, a maximum of 25%. What's the jewel in the Credit Suisse crime that you really want to keep? Everything is, is uh, Credit Suisse is a very strong franchise, and what I'm very uh, pleased is that while we have some overlaps, in many regions and in many products, we have, um, we have complementary uh, skill set. You look at asset management, we're going to be one of the leading asset managers now in the world. And uh, thanks to uh, complementary uh, capabilities, even in Switzerland, we have uh, complementary uh, clients, uh, franchises, and, and, and in asset management. Uh, from a regional standpoint of view, uh, you look at Asia and also in Europe, we have uh, complementing um, uh, clients, uh, franchises. When will you go on the road? Are you talking to clients? Who are you talking to? What pitch are you making to stay with the United Ermotti group? Well, it's not a United Ermotti group, it's UBS. And uh, I think that uh, uh, the strength we have been demonstrating, the discipline we demonstrated in the last 12 years or so in, uh, in uh, managing uh, our, our journey will be the same one we want to pursue going forward. So, uh, Is that fine with us? We are less we are a less risky trade than you you've been used to. You, know, you come to yeah, us, but but look, you know, at the end of the day, we have been demonstrating our strengths in terms of uh, KPIs, capital, liquidity, and so on and so forth. The most important mm -hmm. issue nowadays is to keep a strong profitability and the trust of our clients. Downsizing these combined institutions is going to involve, as you said, reducing risk-weighted assets, but it's also going to be a social cost in terms of job losses. 
How quickly will that pain be felt across the group in your initial estimate at this juncture? This is by far the most painful part of the job, and, uh, but I'm confident that we will uh, do that, first of all, with full respect uh, of the people involved, mm -hmm. uh, fair and, and, and as transparent as possible. Having said that, you know that uh, we are, particularly here in Switzerland, uh, is a pretty aging population. A lot of people are retiring in the next few years, and I'm pretty sure that we will be able, through that and also through natural attrition, to mitigate at least uh, uh, the social cost. You come back into this bank hall, you left it in 2020. The world of banking, you've not been gone from the world of finance, but banking has changed. People say to me, it's not 2008. What is this banking landscape out there for you? Define it. Well, the banking landscape has changed, is evolving, but there is one thing in banking that has remained the same, is trust and confidence of your clients and the employees that work for your organization. This is my focus, to restore uh, proud uh, uh, and, and, and have an organization that, uh, as I said, uh, clients and, and, and employees can be proud of, to work for. Tell me this, uh, we're back in the banking hall. Are you back in your old office? Yes. How does that feel? Good, good feeling. I think I, I was uh, very honored but humbled uh, about uh, this uh, new uh, um, uh, task I have. and. Uh, and the feeling is good, uh, but also there is a clear sense of responsibility to make uh, sure that this thing uh, goes in the right direction. Sergio Marti, welcome back to Bloomberg. Thank you.